without further ado, I would like to welcome Victoria van Kamp on stage, the CTO of SKF. Welcome, Victoria. Thank you, Magnus. So, how are you? I'm great, and it's great to be two Swedes on stage here in Germany in front of this fantastic crowd. Yeah, I don't think it's ever happened before. Mm, I don't know. Let's see yeah. how this works. If it's going to happen again, maybe not. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> so have you had a chance to look at our booth? I have, and, and actually I spent most of the time up in the Mindsphere Lounge, which is, I'm a mechanical engineer. Some years back, I think I would have been on the ground floor, but now it is upstairs where things are happening. It is really something. Yes, this may very well be the place for digitalization and data analytics. Um, mm, yes. um, talking about SKF, the company was founded 1907. Yes. What do you think are the key ingredients for being so successful over such a long time? Uh, I, I think our company, I worked for this company for 23 years now. Um, we are obsessed with our customers. We are never afraid of going out and helping a customer. And actually, one feedback we often get uh, is that you guys don't come in suits. You come in work clothes. You know my machines. And that is, that is really, I feel like that. I usually take the grease off my hands, but that is SKF to me. We help our customers. And that's what we've been doing for 112 yeah. years, and that's why we're still here. Do you think we do the same thing at Siemens? I think you do. I get the feeling that you are, we, we work with you because you understand. You understand our production, you right. understand our customers. And you use all the technology you were just showing, you use it on yourself. Yeah. Which is actually, we, we trust you. You should, because that's what we're here for. Yeah. Um, I recently read, I mean, ball bearings, uh, so we all know they exist. At least if you look at a car, you know for sure there are at least four ball bearings on a car, right? Yes. At least <laughs> and four. More, yeah. And when they don't work, they, you notice that also. Uh, yeah, you so, hear so, it. So I read this blog post called Don't Ask for Ball Bearings. Bearings ask for reliable rotation. Exactly. Can you expand on that topic, please? Uh, yeah, what is this now? Is SKF stopping to sell ball bearings? Uh, actually, yes, is the answer. What we provide, our customers don't really want bearings, ball bearings, what our founder came up with. What they do want is reliable rotation. They want their machines, their fans, their electric motors, their paper machines, conveyor belts to run and run without problems. A good ball bearing is a ball bearing you never ever notice. And that's what we are trying to do. And we want to take this one step further. So we don't want to sell bearings, hardware, to our customers. We want to provide reliable rotation, which means we take responsibility that your machine operates. And I can tell you, that's a big step for a 112-year-old company that is excelling in producing these kinds of things. But it is what we're doing. So we are actually disrupting ourselves, I would say. Well, that's kind of brave. Um, yeah. so, so what would a typical case be? And how has it been perceived by your customers? Uh, we have, um, for example, we take care of the operation of uh, conveyor belts for many of our customers. And what we do then is to go in, do an audit, and look at the history. What are the typical failure causes? How long do you run between issues? Uh, what is the cost of a downtime? And then we re-engineer. We come with the right solution or product, the right seals. Very often, bearings fail from problems coming from the outside. We put on, of course, sensors, wireless, wired, whatnot. Uh, software that prognosis or detects and prognosis what will happen. And it could be even a lubrication system. So all of this goes in to providing a solution. And we never sit and discuss the cost for that bearing or this bearing with the customer. What we talk about is what is the benefit? How does this keep your process running? And the payment happens by a monthly fee, right. which is as long as your machine is running, we get paid, and you earn money as a customer. So this is really clever, and our customers think so too. So we have uh, paper mills, we have mines, uh, we have cement mills running this kind of uh, uh, contracts, and it's going to 
be, uh, I would think, before I retire, everywhere. Okay. Uh, you, you said that you have, um, let's say, a production line with 70,000 ball bearings. Yeah, a typical conveyor belt in a platinum mine or a copper mine, you would transport um, your ore, iron ore or copper ore, over long distances. And typically, you can have 70,000 ball bearings in such an equipment. Or in a paper machine, there are some 600 ball bearings. If one of those 600 fails, no paper. So of course they're critical. And of course, we should keep them running. Yeah, and also if you, if you look at that, if you have those ball bearings, world-class ball bearings that you produce, and being able to develop a solution that perhaps has 1% reduced uh, friction, that means, you, uh, I guess, also you save energy. Exactly. Think of those 70,000 bearings in the conveyor belt. If you can reduce energy consumption, reduce friction, that's uh, one less electric motor somewhere driving that thing. Uh, that's so. just, yeah. Um, I know you've been here for a few days uh, at a trade show. I saw a presentation yesterday in the Swedish Pavilion, which if you have time, you should also go and visit. They have great Swedish coffee, and there's <laughs> sure. a lot of interesting companies. And uh, I would say that Sweden is clearly a, com a country where the digitalization has been driven very hard by companies such as SKF, yeah. Electrolux, Volvo, and so on yes. and so forth. Would you say that being partner country in Hanover at this trade show brings value to you as a company and to Sweden? What's your take on that? Uh, yes, it does. Uh, more, more than I thought, actually. We got a chance to, to show what Sweden is really good at, collaboration between different companies. And digitalization, I think you all know that, uh, and actually that's what you see upstairs in the Mindsphere Lounge. Collaboration is the future. Yes, we will compete, uh, but without collaboration, nobody wants yet another app to uh, do anything. They want collaboration. They want a seamless experience. So that is what Sweden's good at. And I think with, with uh, Siemens and SKF, we actually show, even if it's Germany and Sweden, we uh, managed to show partner country in real life. There. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you talk a lot about Mindsphere. So you have a booth up there with specialists, and you're utilizing Mindsphere to analyze the data and feeding that back. Yes. Um, have you been using this approach somewhere with Mindsphere, or how has that been moving on? We, we have been using, actually we are using Mindsphere in our own production and uh, out with our customers. And again, if customers that are joint customers of Siemens and SKF are using Mindsphere, why should we come with an additional uh, software or something? We are, you're good at Mindsphere, we're very good at reliable rotation. Yeah. So that combination is a winner. That's fantastic, fantastic. And uh, also, um, to this week, we had had a lot of other companies. We talked before we got up on stage about co-creation, and you also mentioned now being able, able to collaborate. Yeah. And we had uh, Giovanni Pacini from Electrolux being mm. part of it. He has this uh, fantastic innovation center in Italy. Would that be also yeah. something that you would be able to pursue moving forward? Um, we, we try, in SKF, we really like to do uh, experimentation together with our customers. So we are not so afraid of uh, doing pilots out in the field. Uh, that, is, that is kind of us. So I don't see that we're building up a lab. But actually, uh, Electrolux, Giovanni and myself, we are members of something called Combient in Sweden, which is a constellation of 28 companies working to accelerate digitalization in Sweden and Finland. And that has actually been really, really good to take technology, try it out together, and implement and use it. So that's, uh, go, if you go over to the Swedish pavilion, you'll see the combient examples. And that's our way of, of uh, co-creation, one way. Um. I already spoke about that at the beginning, how you see Siemens as a partner. Um, moving on from this, now you come home, you're loaded with uh, inspiration. You've seen a lot of presentations, <laughs> had a lot of talks. Uh, uh, what is the next steps for you now moving forward with this? Have you gotten new ideas? Uh, have you seen uh, it in action here? Uh, there, there are definitely new ideas, but I, I think uh, digitalization, that is to me now, we, Industry 4.0 has been here at Hanover Fair for a few years. This year, 
now, now the rubber hits the road. Now it's happening for real. And I think now is the time to show the value. I'm a business person, yes, an engineer. But at some point, we have to start generating this value that we all talk about. And that is what we're going to do now. So I see your colleagues over here uh, and mine as well. Let's go get those customer cases into real life. Okay. That is what we should be doing. Okay. I also happen to know when you did your PhD, you did some work as a teacher on the side. Yes. <laughs> what would you say to teach the audience here about digitalization and your experience being 23 years at SKF? I mean... Mm, I, to me, uh, remember, uh, neither Siemens or us, we are not selling digitalization. Nobody wants to buy a bag of digitalization. What your customers and you, what you want to do is to be good producing whatever it is that you're producing, improving the world, employing your people, go to work and smile. You're not buying digitalization. That is one more tool that we have. But I do think it's important to explain to your colleagues, your friends, your families, what is digitalization and explain it by real examples. And I think that's what you're starting to do now up in, up in the lounge yeah. here. I mean, I think also a trade show like this, to be able to experience technology, to hear someone telling a compelling story, because it's all about storytelling at the end of the day. Like, you have a product, but in what context do you yeah. position this product? And to me, this may very well be the place to do such thing, for sure. Yeah. Um, we're almost done, Victoria. Uh, and. I would like to ask you, is there anything you would like to recommend the audience? It could be a book, it could be food, it could be a journey, it could be uh, <laughs> anything. Um, I, one recommendation, go travel. Go travel before you get too old to do it. That is my best recommendation. But uh, I have a book that I really, really enjoy, and I, I would suggest you look it up. It's called Zone to Win, and the author, his name is Jeffrey Moore. This book is about disruption and how you avoid being disrupted as an existing company. Because most of us, we sit all Siemens, SKF, existing companies, uh, people come and tell us, you're going to be disrupted, just give up, roll over and die, why don't you stop producing your old hardware? Well, actually, we can't do that. We can't do it to our employees, our, co our colleagues, our shareholders. So how do you think? as an existing company to go over the hump and disrupt yourself. That is what this book is about. So continues to develop yourself, continues to optimize your thinking, yes. and take advantage of... Uh, of your existing strength, on uh, eating your own dog food, as you say. <laughs> <laughs> Which we do as Siemens. So we, <laughs> it's just a stupid way of putting it, but what we're saying is that what we are showing here is something in software and development tools. We use yeah. it ourselves. So, yes. so eating our, dog, your, our own dog food, Operate yes, Operate on yourself. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and that is uh, so a very good book for those of you who actually want to have some hope and some tri ticks, uh, trips and tricks to survive in the disrupted world. Okay. Very, very good. Victoria, it has been a true pleasure to get to know you, and I am very thankful Great. for having you here with us. I'm happy to be here. So Thank appreciate you. that very much. So give and it now. up for Victoria van Kam. Thank you very much. Thank you. Siemens, ingenuity for life.